So I'm very happy to be presenting my project on the digitalization of banking efficiency versus distributive effects. And I am a fourth year PhD student in finance. And thank you so much to the Bernstein Center for, for funding this project. Uh, the motivation for my project is that you know, over the past two decades, commercial banking has really been transformed by the development of digital technologies. In particular, the banking sector spends more on technology than any other industry, and it spent over $200 billion on IT expenditures last year. Here, I'm showing a figure of the adoption of front-end digital technologies by banks. The, the blue line represents the proportion of banks that have an online uh, website, and the black and purple line are different measures of the proportion of banks that have mobile applications, which are a really crucial way that people interact with their banks these days. And so looking at this, the, the research question that I have is what are the effects of you know, this uh, like proliferation of online service platforms for the banking sector? And uh, to, to think about what, what could, uh, what this what effect this could have i focus on two key dimensions along which branch and online services differ the first is information uh, online services really erode banks ability to develop relationships but on the other hand they facilitate the collection of transactional information from customers uh, through through online platforms and then the other difference is along costs. You know, online platforms, uh, they are supplied at the bank level rather than locally at the branch level for a given market. And so they may also scale more easily in, in user traffic as, as banks get uh, more users than, than a, a bank branch would scale because then they would have to hire all these new employees for every uh, new branch. So to think about the effect that these differences may have, I, I leverage new data and a source of random variation in demand for online services to show that first, banks select into adoption depending on the importance of relationships for their lending uh, business and based on their scale. And second, after adopting uh, these technologies, banks locally substitute away from branch services. So they close their, their branches, but depending on the characteristics of their local markets and banks reduce their relationship-based loan origination. And uh, in exchange, they increase their transactional loan origination, such as mortgages that they can sell to agencies um, and you know, uh, have codified kind of characteristics. So let me show you a little bit about how I do this. The first crucial component of this project is that I hand construct granular panel data on bank services, both for branch services and online services. On the branch side, I collect public online reviews for all bank branches in the US. This is over 700,000 reviews for the 60,000 bank branches over the past decade. Um, this is very rich textual data uh, on branch service quality that has never been you know, exploited before uh, in research. And then on the other hand, I also have uh, online service quality from banks, which I, I collect from the Apple App Store and Android uh, ratings and reviews. So it's kind of a, a direct analog for every bank. I have the rating and reviews of their application. And uh, crucially, I also have their application release date, which tells me when they adopted this new technology. And um, so here I just have kind of a uh, latent Dirichlet allocation uh, topic bubble, uh, which shows that, you know, um, uh, one thing that you can take away from this is that uh, branch services are much more focused on relationship uh, kind of services, whereas online services on the right really focus on transactional convenience. And, um, and then the second component of, of my uh, paper is that I need to find some variation in demand for online services that uh, is uh, going to allow me to identify the effects that I'm interested in. And this is because banks that choose to adopt digital services may differ in other un uh, unobservable ways from those that do not, that can complicate my analysis when I'm trying to figure out the effects of this adoption. So what I use is the quasi-random rollout of the iPhone in the US, where it was released exclusively with AT&T for, uh, for the first five years of, of its release. And so I can identify the effect of adopting online services by comparing quite similar banks that just defer in their markets exposure to, to mobile data coverage. 
Um, so to summarize in this paper, I find that banks adoption of digital services may give rise to a tension between banking sector efficiency gains that comes from adopting uh, new technology uh, with the distribution uh, effects of service and credit supply. Um, and my next step is to really formalize this in a model that trades off the pass through of efficiency gains um, with the distributive welfare implications for service provision and lending. So thank you very much uh, again. Thanks. Thank you so much, Naz. Um, we've got a question from Kim. Kim, would you like to come off mic and ask your question? Yeah. Uh, hi, Nas. Thank you very much for this super interesting project. So my first uh, question is, do you think, um, so they move away from relationship lending. And I think there are a lot of people who are like, maybe not that financially literate or like don't have the assets, you know, to, to like show that they maybe can get the loan. So this really depends a lot from them on the, what kind of relationship they have with their local banker. To, in order to get the loan, right? So do you think that this basically puts a lot of people at a disadvantage, maybe means that they don't have access to credit anymore, they basically get excluded? Um, or are these apps potentially doing something that would even allow them to get more access to credit? And then my second um, question is, or maybe let's go with the first one and then I ask the second. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kim. Yeah, so I think, um... That's a really uh, important question. And my sense is that, you know, uh, if you think about the traditional theories of bank lending, banks are really the ones who can lend based on relationships. There's not really a, an alternative for these customers who rely on relationship-based lending because they don't have the, the hard transactional information to secure that loan. So uh, my sense is that if banks reduce their relationship-based lending because of this adoption of more digital services, it would ex kind of crowd out the ability of those types of customers to, to get credit. And that's definitely something I, I want to explore more going forward. Thank you. Um, and then my second question is, so you're using this IB strategy. Um, are there other papers that use it? And I'm asking that because there are potentially effects of that um, mobile money exposure that um, affect your bank level outcomes through other ways than the adoption of the of the apps, right? That's a, that's a great question. So um, there is no paper that uses my exact identification strategy. However, there are papers that use um, a recent paper in the QJE that uses kind of variation in um, mobile data coverage in general. And uh, a way to get around the fact that, of course, mobile data coverage is not random is that they also use lightning strike frequency as kind of this exogenous variation in the ability of um, uh, like the technology to have coverage in that area. And something that helps me is that I'm focusing on the coverage of AT&T versus, for example, the coverage of Verizon. And you may think that those two companies where one covers versus the other may be somewhat random. But going forward, I definitely need to isolate a truly you know, random component of, of this coverage to, so that I can identify my yeah. effects. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but that's a great argument that it's about the horizon versus the other one. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Great, looks like Michael has a question also. Yes. Oh, this is very interesting. Oh, Michael, I don't know if you wanna. Uh... Uh, yeah, that was that was about. Thank you for taking my question, uh, Naz. Uh, yeah. The question was about Google's announcement that it's not, they're not going to become a bank. That was just in the paper the other day, and I was wondering if you had maybe some thoughts about what motivated to, them to make that decision about not become a becoming a bank. And also, the, I also typed in another question about synergies possibly between a bank's the digitization of the banking services and also traditional banking customer relationships, if there's not some sort of synergy between the two that That's would allow true. for more customer relationship service across the spectrum of banking op opportunity. Yeah, these are both great questions. So I think the Google decision is very interesting. Um, they may just, I, I, in my opinion, maybe they just uh, do not think they can compete with the, 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 the large uh, kind of infrastructure that like traditional banks already have, although now there are a lot of fintech entrants. So I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have an immediate answer to that, but I think it's a very interesting uh, decision by Google. And then the, I do think that there could be cost saving synergies across, you know, providing some services online and then some per services in person, but it's hard for banks to do both of these things uh, very deeply. The more services you provide online, the less you're forming a, a in-person relationship with that customer. So it's difficult to make a character-based assessment then of that customer if you, for example, uh, need to extend them a loan. Thanks so much.